Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 2. What is this, and why it's not as important as you think? We get lost sometimes in the purple pixels, and I hope this video will lessen the blow of sometimes having that one item you want never drop, or having an item that you want go to someone else that you want really badly. Please enjoy. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 2. What is this, and why I don't think it's as important as people make it out to be? This stands for best in slot. And that means it is the best item you can possibly get in each of the following slots on your character for the phase. This, for the majority of characters, is a pipe dream. Most people haven't killed Algalon yet, it is the least killed boss on Warcraft logs, and it has many of the best in slot pieces for a lot of characters. For example, for Warlocks, the best in slot gloves, belt, offhand, and, and main hand. All draw from Algalon. So if you haven't been having Algalon on farm, even though this phase might be a little bit longer, you might not get full this just because the amount of time we have left won't allow all those items to drop. And if they drop, they might not necessarily go to you since the majority of guilds spread the loot around and loot doesn't get funneled to one person besides maybe a demo lock. Perfect lockouts don't exist. All of these items all dropping in one raid is very, very low chance because some of them share loot tables with bosses and on top of that, you still have to share with all of your fellow raiders. The caster loot tables are very, very shared across the board with some items like Conductive Seal being best in slot for 12 or 13 specs across the entire spectrum, which is kind of nuts because you think to yourself, how do I get this item? How important is this item going into future phases? Why do I want this item? Being able to answer this question leads us to our next topic. What other items are there? Because people talk about these best in slot items, why they're so good. But in reality, they're only best in slot if you get them all. There's a lot of ways to create sets that don't rely on some like sleeper pieces that are out there that you can still do a lot of damage on. The key to advancing your character and not thinking so much about this and being upset with pieces that you don't want to drop is thinking about other pieces you could get that are very similar in damage that you don't need to utilize the hit or if you're a melee expertise on. For example, there's two 252 necks for casters. There's the Pendant of Fiery Havoc and there's the Sapphire Amulet of Renewal. And if you look at Sims, it'll always value Sapphire Amulet of Renewal as less, but that's because Sims and 80 upgrades utilizes the hit option. Uh, it, give, it gives it more more damage because it's assuming you utilize all of the hit but if you're not utilizing all the hit this isn't a better option if you're for example using the crafted belt and you don't have the star watchers binding or you're not in line for it you already have the hit source from here so why would you go for another source of hit you'll be over hit cap and then you'll have to talent into it or regem for it in in some sort of other way or or you could drop one, or oh, say you haven't got Nebula Band or Conductive Seal, there's a lot of hit rings in Old War, so you could utilize those instead. And it's constantly an evolving set of gear and stats and weights. And then there's times where you have upgrades that sometimes aren't as big as some other things you get. Maybe you have your set's sight on Star Shard as a Warlock, for example, but you have a Fusion Blade. The Warlock Discord made a, a, a comparison for uh, every single major item for warlocks in old war and i'll li link this in the description below this is a very useful tool and if you go down to star shard star shard diffusion blade is a 96 dps difference now that's a lot but so are most of the other upgrades in the tier if you go to pharaoh's gloves that's 128 DPS difference when compared to the only other 252 piece. Most of the people that are going to be killing Algalon won't have hand wraps of the Vigilant. They'll probably have Pulsar Gloves from 10 man, assuming they're utilizing all of the hit or touch of the occult from badges, maybe even tier gloves. So gloves are a much larger upgrade over a weapon when you already have Fusion Blade. And these are the type of things that people need to be thinking about when they're progressing their character. I made a list of some very noteworthy 232 items that I think are very good. Some of them are best in slot, some of them are not. For example, Volmir is a very good mace that drops off of Thorum and is a great tide, tiding item until you could get caressed for melee. 
Rune Scribe's a decent sword if you're having bad luck with Fusion Blade. You could get the Call of the Worm, Worm Hunter, which is a very, very good headpiece if you don't plan on getting crowned anytime soon. You could plan around the items that you really, really want to get with items that are very close to comparing to those best items that you don't necessarily care as much about. And it's simming on your own time and thinking about these items that will leave you happier after a raid because you can get something and be in line for something else really nice that you, you really want. For melee, I mentioned earlier about utilizing all of the expertise you can. A really good piece example, and this can go across towards other melee as well, are the shoulder pads of the intruder from Iron Council. Now these are best in slot and on, on the on the website and everything, it's everyone says these are the best. But why are they the best? It's because you utilize 54 of that expertise in totality with all of the other pieces full bis. Bis is bis when paired together. It's a big clump of all together. And th there is very little chance you will be able to get all these together unless you're spending extreme amounts of gold and starting from week one, getting RNG every single week. But there's... Uh, shoulders off of Kologarn, the shoulder pads of the monolith, which technically have better raw stats. If you can find the expertise somewhere else, these shoulders are really, really good and can take over that slot completely. I also want to mention one of the most frustrating things in the game is that when you're a higher eye level than somebody else, for example, this is a log from a GDKP the week before where I'm on my GDKP Warlock. I'm eye level 233. RMP is eye level 220. And on forum, he's just owning me. And half the time, the DPS difference you think is gear is something simple like positioning, RNG, your rotation, and that logs are a very powerful tool to analyzing how can I be better? Maybe it's not gear. And if you've exhausted everything in there, you're doing your pre-pots, you're popping defensives, you're, you're moving in an economic way you're doing your rotation properly, you're popping all your cooldowns when you need them, then you can move on to maybe it's just gear. But clearly here, I'm 13 eye levels higher than RMP, so I did something wrong in the way I played on this fight. If you want to go through your logs and try to figure out the best way that you can utilize your cooldowns and everything better, there's some very useful tools. You can click this replay function on the top right to see the fight in real time. Maybe I got really unlucky with lightning chargers. Maybe I died. Maybe my pet got killed and, and I hit the boss too early while I was up here and my pet didn't teleport down with me. But this tool is very, very useful for going through exact positioning. If you want to analyze your damage, you can click your you can go to damage done for the fight and click your character and you could see the uptime on abilities. I had very low uptime on haunt. Uh, maybe something happened. Maybe I, I think I died over here on this fight. I don't even know if I died. Yeah, I did die on this fight to Chain Lightning, and that's probably why my damage is low, but I don't know. Maybe I was messing it beforehand, but low uptime on my dots. Uh, maybe RMP just casted more Shadow Bolts than me. Maybe he had a better Drain Soul snapshot. I could check that out in buffs, seeing when I got PI, speed, when I, how often I was Drain Souling. I could check how many casts of everything I had in a simpler way over here my interrupts. There's a lot of great ways to go through logs. And if you have questions, you could always join my discord and I go through logs for subs or just people that need help. It's not ex exclusive to subs, but always analyze your logs. You'll learn a lot. This is something that we take for granted. And I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope it alleviates a little bit of maybe pressure or anxiety people have about not getting the best in slot items that you possibly can and hopefully people can take an intrinsic look at themselves and try to improve their personal performance before immediately jumping to gear and if they jump to gear find pieces that aren't exactly contested but can be within similar damage to those considered best in slot for what they're working with i want to thank you all very much for watching yet again and i hope you'll do me the honor i'll leave me a sub liking or commenting if you disagree hope to catch you next time peace